Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the policy dialogue and book launch on Blue Economy and Blue Finance, which co-organized by the Asian Development Bank Institute and the Ocean Policy Research Institute of the Sasagawa Teach Foundation. My name is Pichaya Sirit Vanagut. I'm a deputy head and also senior economist of the uh, Capacity Building and Training Department at the ADBI. And I will take the role of the uh, MC today for this policy dialogue and book launch. Before we start, allow me just to share you some house rules uh, to the uh, both the speaker and also the audience. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. Next slide, please. And this is just the book launch. You can also, uh, the, the publication related to this book launch, you can also download from the QR code. This is the agenda. You can also download the QR, uh, the QR codes to look at through your phone. Uh, the house rule for the speaker, it, uh, it just uh, to highly ask that the speaker um, to turn off your video and mute your microphone when other session is ongoing. And during your own session, please leave your video on, but mute the microphone when you are not speaking. The chat with the host and the other participant, if that uh, can be used at the bottom of the page. Next, please. The house rule uh, for the attendees. So uh, today we will be using the pigeon hole live from our, our Q&A section. Uh, the Pigeon Whole Life is a simple interactive mobile website where you can submit questions to the panel of the, uh, of the speakers. If you have any question throughout the panel discussion, feel free to submit them through the Pigeon Hole. And you can also vote any question that interests you. So there are three ways that, to access the Pigeon Whole Life. First, if you are watching your live on the ADBI annual webpage, all you need to do is to click the Q&A icon on the right-hand side, as you see from the arrow of the page, and then you will direct you to the section of the Q&A. Second method is to scan the QR code on your smartphone or tablet, and you, it will also lead you to this uh, screen of the QR, uh, Q&A page. Uh, thirdly, uh, if you are watching by using your PC, just launch your internet browser and enter www.pgnho.at into the address bar. Please key our event code with it ADBMNL55. Once again, ADBMNL55. And then you can start posting your question and also voting um, your, the question that's already there. You, uh, as you can see on this page, the question with the highest number of the word will stand a better chance to answer by the speaker because the moderator will pick on that one. Next slide, please. First, uh, so now uh, I would like just to officially uh, open this uh, policy dialogue and book launch of the uh, Blue Economy and Blue Finance. Allow me just to in kindly invite Professor Dr. Tetsushi Sonobe, the Dean and also the CEO of Asian Development Bank Institute to deliver his opening remark. Uh, Dean Sonobe, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pichaya. Mr. Uh, Minister Stephen Victor, uh, President Hide Sakaguchi, uh, ADB Vice President Roberta Kasari, and the distinct speakers and participants. Uh, good afternoon from Tokyo. On behalf of ADP Institute, I am delighted to join President Sakaguchi from Ocean Policy Research Institute of Sasakawa Peace Foundation, or OPRI, in welcoming you all to the policy dialogue and the book launch of a recent publication titled Blue Economy and Blue Finance toward sustainable development and ocean governance as a side event of the 50, uh, 55th ADB annual meeting. The book is published as ADBI's knowledge product that complements ADB's action plan for healthy ocean 2019 to 2024 and ADB ocean financing initiatives. The book is timely and relevant as it is intended to promote sustainable ocean 
and the coastal development and the innovative ocean financing schemes with an evidence-based approach. I'd like to express my deep appreciation to the co-editors of this book, who are also speakers at today's launch event. Dr. Peter Morgan, ADBI Senior Consulting Economist and my advisor. Dr. Michael Juan, Senior Research Fellow at OPRI, and Ms. Dominique Benzaken, uh, Senior Policy Expert at Australian National Center for Ocean Resources and Security, University of Wollongong, or UNCODS. It is delightful to see our growing and close collaboration with OPRI and UNCODS in producing the knowledge products that contribute to the effective governance and sustainable development of blue economy and blue finance in Asia and the Pacific. I'd like to uh, thank uh, also the distinguished speakers and uh, joining today. His uh, Excellency Stephen Victor, uh, Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries and the Environment, uh, Republic of Pala. Dr. Hendra Yusram, Secretary of Director General, Indonesia's Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. Mr. Polives Lau, Deputy Director of Macroeconomic and the Fiscal Department, Cambodia's Ministry of Economy and Finance. Dr. Monsu Hossein, Research Director of Bangladesh Institute of Bangladesh, uh, Development Studies. And uh, Dr. Rima uh, Prama Atha, uh, Chief Economist, uh, Danek De Ksa uh, uh, Research Institute. Your insights, knowledge, and the expertise will certainly add significant value to our discussions today. This was oceans, uh, resource frontiers for humankind, massive reserves for sustainable development, and the natural buffers against climate change. Oceans are the key driving force to global value creation and livelihood, starting from a small fisherman village to coastal seaports and international ocean-based industries, which account for 90% of world trade. Over 3 billion people rely on marine biodiversity for their livelihood and food security. And nearly 7 million, 700 million people are living in low-lying coastal zones. Oceans are indeed vital to our flourishing global economy and sustainable development. It is bitter truth, however, that oceans are now in grave danger due to the results or the effects of human activities. The challenges we face today, whether climate change, overfishing, and uh, uh, marine pollution, <coughs> these are also uh, truly global in scale and uh, dimension, but especially hazardous to small island developing states and the coastal economies that are highly dependent on marine and coastal ecosystems. It's time to stop taking the bounty of oceans for granted. We need to further strengthen our collaboration to support uh, a robust and sustainable global blue economy that benefits everyone. I believe cutting edge innovation and uh, Knowledge sharing must be co-pillars in ensuring sustainable economic development with reliable ocean governance for our future generations. Recognizing these threats and the necessity for action in small island developing states and coastal countries, 
ADB has launched and implemented many ocean related initiatives under its Healthy Ocean Action Plan and the leadership of Ms. Roberta Casari, ADB Vice President for Finance and the Risk Management. Today, we are privileged to have her share the details with us today. Distinguished speakers and uh, participants, I hope that you will enjoy and benefit from this policy dialogue and book launch, and that you will gain practical knowledge and insights in innovative solutions, enabling healthy oceans and blue finance. We can together help shape a password and inclusive, sustainable blue economy. With that, I wish you a fruitful discussion in the next hour. Thank you very much. I'll stop here. Thank you very much, Dean Sonobe, for your opening remarks. Uh, to join uh, Dean Sonobe on this opening section, we have um, the message from Dr. Hide Sakakushi, the president of the Ocean Policy Research Institute of the Sasakawa Peace Foundation. Unfortunately, he cannot join us today, so it's going to be the video message from him. Dear IDB Institute Dean Tatsushi Sonobe, IDB Vice President Roberto Casali, delegates from the IDB member countries, ladies and gentlemen. I am Hidesaka Guchi, President of the Ocean Policy Research Institute of the Saskia Peace Foundation. It is my great pleasure to deliver the opening remarks of this policy dialogue and book launch Blue Economy and Blue Finance as a side event of the 55th IDB Annual Meeting. I recall our first joint event held in Fiji at the 52nd IDB Annual Meeting, along with the announcement of the Action Plan for Healthy Oceans and Sustainable Blue Economies and Ocean Financing Initiative by the IDB. I am proud to share with you that blue economy and blue finance are now the two catchiest terms concerning the ocean in spite of the language barrier. The year 2022 is turning out to be the excellent year of recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, especially with success of super year for the ocean. Global leaders sit together and discuss the progressive agenda with the ambition to strengthen their commitment with actions. We had the One Ocean Summit in France in February, our Ocean Conference in Plau in April, and the United Nations Ocean Conference in Portugal in June. As a product of the exceptional endeavors of partners, Please allow me to express my heartfelt congratulations on the publication and the launch of the book Blue Economy and Blue Finance. This accomplishment represents solid collaboration with the Spider Ocean issue by the ADB Institute, Ocean Affairs Council, and Argos, the University of Wulongal. My gratitude also goes to each chapter's authors for their timely contribution to evidence-based approaches to ensure better and holistic policy making towards sustainable development and ocean governance. More importantly, my impression of this book is that it shows interdisciplinary and interregional coverage regardless of the seniority, which sustainable substantially encourages early career ocean professionals. We cannot emphasize too much the importance of inclusive issues based on problems solving, for that is the core value 
indicated in the United Nations Decade Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Lastly, Ocean Policy Research Institute of the Saskia Peace Foundation is a non-governmental ocean policy think tank that aims to formulate action plans on oceans and international ocean governance. We work together to ensure the ocean we need for the future we want. We highly value the collaboration with ADBI and ANCOS and look forward to consolidating our partnership to establish a platform for academic exchanges and multilateral dialogues. I wish you all have a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. And that's the um, uh, opening remarks from uh, Dean Sonobe and also Dr. Sakakushi from the co-organizer of this event. Next section, we have an honor to welcome the ADB Vice President for Finance and Risk Management, Ms. Roberta Kasari. She will uh, share with us the uh, ADB initiative related to ocean, as well as the ocean financing initiative. Uh, VP Kasari, the floor is yours, ma'am. Thanks. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, partners, and friends, a very good afternoon from Manila to you all. It's uh, my great pleasure to participate in this policy dialogue and book launch on blue economy and blue finance. This topic is crucial to the lives of millions of people in our region, especially the most vulnerable, and uh, it's of great interest to me. Healthy oceans underpin our global prosperity. They are a vital resource on which we rely on for food, energy, water, and livelihood. Ocean assets are valued at around 24 trillion US dollars with an estimated annual value of 2.5 trillion US dollars per year. If treated as a country, the ocean would be the world's eighth largest economy in 2022. And this is a conservative estimate as this does not account for vital ecosystem services such as climate change mitigation and coastal protection. For the people of Asia and the Pacific, ocean constitute the single most important ecosystem and resource base. In uh, some of our developing member countries, the ocean economy accounts for 15 to 20% of their GDP. In others, like Timor-Leste, it even accounts for 87% of its GDP. Unfortunately, decades of unsustainable practices at sea and on land, such as untreated waste dumping, overfishing, and anthropogenic climate change, are putting this incredible resource, its uh, biodiversity, and the many livelihoods depending on it at risk. In Asia and the Pacific, we are substantially off track on meeting the SDGs 14, life below water. And therefore, we urgently need to scale up investments in the sustainable blue economy, stop the detrimental pollution and restore and protect functioning marine ecosystems. This is why ADB launched the action plan for healthy oceans and sustainable blue economies in 2019 and committed 5 billion US dollars in financing and technical assistance by 2024. This is not the end target, but a mean to catalyze further ocean investments and scale up our action. ADB acts as a bridge between global financial markets 
and the global development community, and therefore has the opportunity and would say the mandate to advocate, enable, catalyze, and facilitate private capital for ocean positive finance. By bringing together clients, governments, and the private sector, we can break down silos and crowd in the required public and private capital for sustainable oceans and blue economies. To achieve this, ADB adopted a two-pronged approach, which consists of one, building attractive blue financing markets. Two, establishing platforms to mobilize blue finance. So first, ADB aims to build a market for setting standards and framework for sustainable blue finance. We are supporting our developing member countries to prepare and deliver impactful investments that meet such standards. This will help in matching the increasing global demand for verifiable sustainable finance with the supply of bankable ocean projects. In 2020, ADB launched the Ocean Finance Framework to guide and track ocean investments. ADB used this as uh, the basis to expand its green and blue bond framework and issued its uh, first blue bond for a nominal amount of 300 million US dollars in 2021. The proceeds are used for marine ecosystem management and restoration, pollution control, sustainable coastal infrastructure development. Building on this, ADB continues its policy dialogue with key DMCs, so the development member countries. We are supporting them in developing ocean health and blue economy roadmaps, building bankable projects uh, pipelines, and implementing ocean positive projects that meet the blue bonds standards. In June 2022, ADB launched an initiative with UN Global Compact, the International Capital Market, uh, Markets Association, UNEP Finance Initiative, and the International Finance Corporation to develop the global blue bond guidance. This will provide the global market consistency and transparency in financing the blue economy. We hope this will further unlock capital available for the blue economy by inviting more ESG investors. The second part of our approach is a to develop new platforms to accelerate blue finance. For example, ADB has established the Blue Sea Finance Hub based in our resident mission in Jakarta to catalyze blue economy investments across Southeast Asia region. With a particular focus on ASEAN governments and small and medium enterprises, this hub aims to catalyze a large flow of capital from both public and private sources through innovative structuring of blue projects, strengthening capacity and developing strategies to scale up SMEs business models. We are also developing a Blue Pacific Finance Hub that will focus on ocean climate action, the circular economy, and sustainable seafood. 
we are preparing to launch an ocean financing partnership facility reflecting our recognition on, of the need for strategic long-term multi-partner cooperation. The facility aims to bring together knowledge and financial resources in a coordinated manner and reduce transaction costs for individual projects. All these initiatives are crucial in pushing innovative projects pipelines. I'd like to express my warmest thanks to our ADBI colleagues for preparing the book we are launching today, which compiles a wonderful knowledge base on blue economy and blue finance. This will surely be very important in preparing future projects and scaling up blue finance. I look forward to listening to key insights and experiences from the speakers in the upcoming panel. Thank you all for your attention. I'm convinced that by joining hands and working together, we can catalyze the needed finance for preserving our oceans and promoting blue economies, not just for Asia and the Pacific, but for the sake of everyone's future well-being and prosperity. Thank you again. Back to you. Thank you very much, uh, VP Kasari, for your inspiring and also very informative keynote address. I, I believe that uh, all the audience had learned a lot about the ADB initiative related to the ocean, a healthy ocean, and how ADB could support them in this particular area. I couldn't agree more that we should join hand and uh, you know, do the strengthen collaboration in this area for the uh, prosperity and also resilience of the economies. Thank you again. Okay. So now our uh, next section would be the book presentation. I have an honor to welcome um, the two distinguished speakers who are also the contributors and also the editor of the Blue Economy and Blue Finance publication. First, allow me to introduce the first speaker, Dr. Peter Morgan, the senior, consult, uh, senior consulting economist and advisor to the dean of the ADBI. He also the former uh, vice chair of the research at the ADBI until March 2022. Our second speaker is uh, Dominic Benzagen, the senior policy advisor from the Australian National Center for Ocean Research Resources and Security, University of Wollongong. And lastly, uh, my long-term long -term partner, <laughs> Dr. Michael Huang, Senior Research Fellow from OPRI, uh, Sasagawa Peace Foundation. So all of them will share us about the background of the book publication, the contribution to the blue economy and the blue finance, as well as to highlight the inter-regional collaboration and how we can strengthen and share some case study based on the book publication. Um, the first speaker, I just turned it forward to you, Peter. Thanks very much, uh, Jaya, for that very kind uh, introduction. It's my great pleasure to present this book along with my co-editors. Uh, could we have the uh, slide, please? Next, uh, next. So I'll present the background of the book, and then uh, Dominic Benzakin will talk about contemporary perspectives on blue economy and blue finance. And Michael Huang will give highlights of interregional co collaboration, methodology, case study, and interdisciplinary approach. Next. So the background of the book is that uh, it focuses on the blue economy and blue finance, including issues related to governance, planning, sectoral management, and risk management. Uh, topics include innovative ocean financing schemes and strategies for mitigating the impacts of climate change and unsustainable practices on communities that rely on a healthy ocean and coastal ecosystems. The findings in these chapters, I think, 
will provide comprehensive information and policy implications, which can significantly contribute to the Asian Development Bank's Action Plan for Healthy Oceans 2019-2024 and the Oceans Financing Initiative to support the blue economy, as uh, uh, mentioned earlier by uh, Ms. Kasali. Uh, and we trust that policymakers, academics, and think tank researchers will find this research useful. Next. So uh, what is the blue economy? There is a range of definitions. Uh, uh, according to the World Bank, the range of economic sectors and related policies that together determine whether the use of oceanic resources is sustainable. Uh, Huiznand and Ray's 2015, the set of environmentally and socially sustainable commercial activities, products, services, and investments dependent on and impacting coastal and marine resources. And, and finally, the economist intelligent use uh, intelligence unit uh, focuses on the development of uh, new industries, they say, uh, along with established ocean industries, emerging and new activities such as offshore renewable energy, aquaculture, deep seabed mining, and marine biotechnology will bring new opportunities, growth, and greater diversity to the ocean economy. Next. Uh, so just to give some of the background, uh, as was mentioned earlier, uh, it, it really started with the uh, ADB annual meeting in May 2019, which was held in Fiji. Uh, and at that uh, meeting, the ADB's action plan for healthy oceans and sustainable blue economies was uh, announced. Uh, it will expand financing and technical assistance uh, for ocean health and marine economy projects to $5 billion uh, from 2019 to 2024, including co-financing from partners. And it fo focuses on four areas, creating inclusive livelihoods and business opportunities in sustainable tourism and fisheries, protecting and restoring coastal and marine ecosystems and key rivers, reducing land-based sources of marine pollution, uh, and improving sustainability in port and coastal infrastructure development. Uh, and then, uh, uh, as, was, as was mentioned uh, earlier uh, at that uh, meeting also, there was a side event uh, which was the regional workshop on blue economy disaster risk financing and ocean infrastructure, which was organized by ADBI, OPRI, uh, Fiji National University, and the Asia Pacific Applied Economics Association, uh, which focused on sustainable ocean management and blue financing. Next slide. Uh, and then in 2020, the United Nations proclaimed a decade of ocean science for sus sustainable development, 2021-2030 to support efforts to reverse the cycle of decline in ocean health and gather ocean stakeholders worldwide to create a common framework to ensure sustainable ocean development. Uh, and then uh, uh, two more events. First, uh, March 2020, uh, a regional conference and policy dialogue on blue economy and finance was organized by ADBI, OPRI, and uh, ICDF it held in uh, Fiji. Uh, and the conference uh, consisted of research presentations and policy dialogues bringing together more than 50 participants from academia, governments, and NGOs. Uh, and then uh, the book was essentially based on the conference held in November 20, the Conference on Blue Economy and Blue Finance, organized by OPRI, uh, ANCORS, and ADBI, and the Ocean Affairs Council. And uh, it included uh, presentations on Japan, Australia, the US, Bangladesh, Philippines, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka with a focus on timely ocean issues. Next. Uh, so the, uh, the next uh, part of the presentation will be given by my co-editor, uh, Dominique Benzakin. Dominique? Yes. Um, thank you, Peter. Um, Ancos is um, really delighted to have contributed to this uh, publication. And uh, my, the next few, few slides will be looking at, um, oh, can you move to the previous slide, please? Yep. It will be looking at the contribution to blue economy and blue finance cont cont contemporary trends that this, con this publication focuses on. Next slide, please. As you know, since the early 20th century, and it's been mentioned by previous speakers, there's been a steady, uh, expansion of maritime activities and exploitation of uh, marine resources. And with that, there's been a, a growing concern about the degradation of coastal and uh, marine ecosystem, particular, and this is particularly true in, uh, in the um, uh, Indo-Pacific region. 
they are three main uh, milestones, if you if you like, that sort of uh, provide the background on the emergence of uh, blue economy in global discourse. The first one is the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, and it, it, this is really the the basic sort of architecture for uh, the use how people how um, countries actually use. Um, the ocean, and it's basically area-based codification of right and obligation of states, coastal states, but also other states that actually use um, the ocean. It's really the, the, the basis for the regulation of maritime activities such as fishing, shipping, and mining. The second major um, development in global discourse is the emergence of the concept of sustainability and the growing place of the ocean in sustainable development and contribution to uh, economic prosperity. Three main things are mentioned here. The Rio conference in 1992 with Agenda 21 as the implementing mechanism and chapter 17 on ocean, really early days. And then the more recent uh, Rio plus 20, which actually saw uh, the um, 2030 SDGs being endorsed and the SDG 14 at the UN uh, General Assembly in 2015. And finally, uh, the Ocean Decade of Science for Sustainable Development, which is more about the evidence base for sustainable blue economy. And the final major uh, concept is uh, the relationship between ocean and climate. And that's also been mentioned by uh, uh, previous speakers and some major, it's more recent, and it's really arose from the, uh, U, the UN uh, framework for climate change, Paris Agreement in 2015, which for the first time mentioned ocean in this uh, agreement, really an important milestone for that link between ocean and climate. And uh, the more recent um, IPCC report on ocean and the cryosphere in a changing climate, which was published in 2019. And the increasing sort of rise of ocean risk and also a nature based solution to actually address um, the climate uh, issues. Next slide, please. Some of the key trends on blue economy and blue finance uh, a number of global and regional blue economy initiatives, whether it is the high level panel for sustainable ocean economy or regional blue economy initiative, and that includes the ASEAN Declaration on Blue Economy of um, October 2021, uh, and the rise of uh, diversity of circumstances, but common principles for sustainability and equity. Large public investment in ocean sustainability and blue economy, and uh, the vice president of the ADB made a, a, a very good uh, description of how this is actually happening and a small but growing interest of capital market in financing sustainable blue economy through innovative finance and the development of guidance uh, for the uh, financial sector. Finally, extensive blue economy policy and scholarly analysis and guidance, and I've listed here just a few, uh, the OECD on policy coherence, for example, the UNDP and UNEP, technical guidance of the Global Partnership on Ocean Accounting. Next slide, please. Now we're turning to the publication uh, that we actually uh, put together. Uh, there's a diversity of paper across a range of discipline sectors and countries, which is a, a hallmark of blue economy as a multidimensional and multi-sectoral concept. Most of the papers, focus on the enabling environment and three major uh, aspects are coming through. One is governance, the other one is capacity, and the third one is finance. Uh, on the governance side, chapter five, really interesting government policy and industry, industrial clusters as drivers of blue economy in China, really interesting case study. In the Philippines, two interesting chapters uh, chapter six and chapter eight, looking also at policy and institution for sustainable ocean tourism development. And chapter eight focused more specifically on taking a litter and circular approach. A really interesting also um, paper in Bangladesh, looking at institution for sustainable uh, tourism for socioeconomic outcome. 
And finally, in India, an, an interesting paper on mapping policy, legal and institutions for sustainable offshore wind development, chapter nine. Next slide, please. Now, the other part of the other aspect of the, the papers of the publication, the look at finance and financing tool, very interesting paper on tracking ocean international aid flow, chapter three, uh, the blueness index for cooperation as an attractive uh, feature for investors is a really interesting chapter to uh, a paper to looking at uh, a, a climate related index. And a third, um, a, 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 a third one on looking at capitalizing on co-benefits and synergies to scale up locally based blue economy on chapter seven. And finally, a comparative analysis of fisheries financing an institution with Cambodia, India, Indonesia, focusing on the importance of partnership between the various actors that actually um, interact in the financing uh, universe. And last, uh, management tools. One is a model for disaster risk management policy post COVID in Fiji, chapter 11. And the last one is uh, looking at shoreline protection infrastructure in the context of increasing erosion in Sri Lanka, which focuses on the climate change as well. Next slide, please. To conclude, the publication, uh, the Blue economy as a multidimensional concept requires a multidisciplinary research and collaboration. And so the collaboration between OPRI, ADBI and ANCORS is a very important one and uh, will continue in the future uh, to actually uh, focus on blue economy and blue finance. Uh, this collection of paper contributes to developing a regionally based expertise and knowledge to inform policymakers and practitioners. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So I'm going to introduce the uh, the the part of the the highlights. Uh, next page, please. Uh, for this book, uh, ongoing uh, Vice President Casales mentioned it's all for the well the everyone in the human uh, kind. So and now I also like to highlight the three chapters that uh, includes the international collaboration. For example, uh, chapter three, channeling international aid for ocean conservation and climate uh, action. Uh, so this is the joint work between uh, Japan and USA. So that is from the OPR and the Duke University. And in uh, chapter seven, we have the case from uh, Japan and Palau for capitalizing the co-benefits and the synergies to promote the blue economy in Asia and Pacific. We also have the Minister of uh, uh, Fishery from the Palau so to share more insight of it. And also uh, the chapter 11 is a joint work with Japan and the International Institute for Applied System Analysis or EASA in Austria. So we try to use the well, cutting edge uh, modeling and then to provide the uh, recommendation for the central bank to, especially for the small island developing states in the Pacific to react with the, uh, the disaster and also like the, the COVID pandemic. Next slide, please. So for the, the tracing, the tracing the uh, international uh, aid for ocean conservation, uh, we do also for the data uh, term uh, search from the term and then for the following institutes like the Global Environmental Facilities, uh, World Bank, and ADB and AFDB. So not only to, to uh, uh, abstracting the data, but also from the interview to determine the, the trend. Next slide, please. So after we define the trend and then also the usage, we can further uh, visualize where the found comes from and for what purpose also linked with the uh, uh, SDGs that we can uh, have a map overview of map and then see what part would be necessary. That is very uh, referable for the state uh, policy making and also other stakeholders. Next slide, please. And for capitalizing the co-benefits and synergy to promote blue economy in Asia and Pacific for the case of Japan and Palau, the comparisons. That uh, for for Japan, we can see the uh, right right hand right top the the angle. That in 20, 2011, we had the Great East Earthquake Japan, and through the uh, recovery process, 
and we realized that, for example, the oyster production uh, increased uh, substantially, not just for the, the volume, but also for its uh, value add. So that will be a very important case that uh, to, to make to make the a sustainable fishery a certificate and also the branding as well. And also uh, the, the developing in the tourism in Palau also had a very uh, important transition that we can hear further with the minister from Palau later. Next slide, please. So finally, we had a, a paper with the Japan and ESA to make it build back better in the small island developing states. Initial insights from the binary constraint disaster model for disaster risk management and policy option in Fiji. So we use a bind model. It's a uh, demand-driven macroeconomic model that captures the joint impact of disaster recovery and also the uh, the, the tools, instrument from the central bank or from the uh, fiscal policy. Next page, please. So the feature for this uh, analysis is not only uh, ana analyze the uh, natural hazard like a cyclone that hit uh, the the shock, but also the uh, the pandemic of COVID nineteen in recent because it's a huge impact for the tourism industry and also uh, shows importance of uh, uh, also the uh, debt finance uh, tax increase kind of instrument from the government and this kind of curve in the modeling can also help the policymaker to prepare the possible shock and and also. Uh, to cre create the best option, com combined option, option to for for this uh, kind of a, a shock, and also for the future uh, physical policy, and as well as the uh, other instruments. So this, I would like to uh, say that this uh, uh, application jointly with many uh, case studies, and also provide the uh, cutting edge research and evidence based approach. Uh, later, we will have a, a panel discussion to, to discuss further and also uh, have the real reaction with the audience. Thank you. Thanks so much. And over to Pichaya. Thank you very much all for all the three speakers with a um, um, very comprehensive presentation, uh, even though we have such a um, <laughs> limited time. Uh, so right now, uh, we like just to move to the next section that actually would be related to the book presentation for the summary that you just gave, uh, shared with us. It's the panel discussion on the blue economy and blue finance. I also like just to welcome uh, Michael again one more time to be a moderator for this section and um, uh, Michael we have about uh, 40 minutes uh, for, uh, until the end of the, this event so uh, please go ahead and take the floor thank you thank you so much Vijaya and I was told to make another kind of uh, uh, introduction for the uh, uh, the pigeon hole life so maybe I would like to turn to the introduction slides the 16 page because at this session, we welcome the participants also can uh, to raise the questions to the to the panelists. So feel free to, to log in. And then in, if we still have some time, we will also invite the questions. So allow me to uh, have a, another brief introductions with, uh, with the panelists. Uh, we have uh, uh, Minister Stephen Victor from uh, Republic Palau. So he's actually a uh, uh, from uh, Minister of Agriculture, Fishery, and Environment, and also he's a marine bio biologist by training and an avid greater at heart. He served for environment and then conservation sector in Palau and also the Micronesia Zone for 20 years. So second, we will have uh, Dr. Uh, Hondra Yurson Siri, uh, Secretary of the Directorial General, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fishery Indonesia. So uh, Dr. Siri is responsible for developing strategic inputs and recommendation, policy coordination and technique support. So we look forward to his uh, introduction about uh, the uh, kind of insight of uh, Indonesia. And we also have uh, Dr. Rima Parma Atha, uh, the chief economist uh, of the uh, Denarxa Research Institute. And also the, he, she's also the head of the uh, research institute uh, prior to Joined the, uh, the the research, she served as the country economist at the United Nations Development Program in Indonesia, as well as the lecturer at the Faculty Economics of the University of Indonesia. And we have a uh, uh, Mr. Olivier Lau, the Deputy Director of Macroeconomic and Fiscal Department, 
General Department of Policy Ministry of Economy and Finance. So Mr. Lau uh, has extensively engaged in the conducting various kinds of uh, policy research studies related to agricultural value chain, uh, public investment in agriculture sector, food price, and then fish market analysis, as well as uh, 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 a lot of uh, um, policy studies and analysis division. And then we have uh, Dr. Monsur Hosoin, the research director of the Bangladesh Institute of De Development Studies. His area mainly concentrates on the micro, uh, macro financial domain and also uh, blue economy, knowledge economy, and green finance. So uh, first, so as the uh, the oldest, I would like to invite uh, Minister uh, Stephen Victor uh, from uh, the Republic of Palau for for the discussion. So, uh, Minister. Um, COVID-19 has uh, dramatically damaged the economy of uh, small island developing states. But still, 2020 actually resumed as the super year for the ocean, uh, uh, for the, our oceans, uh, because we have our ocean conference in Palau earlier this year, and then the ocean summit as well. So I would like to uh, ask that in this uh, kind of a vibrant blue recovery in many new projects, could Palau share with us the recent implement implementation of the blue economy? And also maybe more specifically, please indicate that what is the key elements in fishery infrastructure, human resource or international travel and resource to ensure a resilient recovery. So Minister uh, Victor. Thank you, uh, Michael and uh, good afternoon. Uh to uh, everyone and uh, distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, uh, Palau uh, has taken a very progressive approach to uh, uh, the ocean, having uh, uh, put in place policies that protect the ocean, such as uh, banning uh, deep bottom trolling, uh, banning uh, deep sea mining, and more recently establishing uh, a large uh, marine protected areas to ensure uh, sustainable uh, ocean uh, that would benefit uh, the people of Palau and the region. Palau also uh, had focused on developing a uh, tourism sector uh, that supports uh, our uh, socioeconomic well-being uh, in Palau. Of course, uh, COVID-19 has uh, really exposed uh, our vulnerability as a small uh, developing island states uh, to uh, these global shocks as we work toward the development of a resilient uh, blue economy. So taking uh, this uh, into context, uh, Palau uh, has embarked on uh, uh, an approach to develop uh, a more sustainable and resilient uh, blue economy based on tourism, fisheries, and aquaculture. And so in uh, 2021, uh, we developed a blue prosperity plan, which uh, uh, has uh, an overarching goal of uh, ensuring 100% uh, ocean uh, management in Palau. Along uh, that goal, we have uh, three basic pillars of uh, how we hope to develop uh, a resilient blue economy. One is uh, strengthening our tourism sector, uh, really evaluating what are the businesses approach that would ensure that much of the benefit from the tourism industry can be left in Palau that will enhance uh, human capacity in terms of uh, developing key capacity for Palauans to then uh, operate and run uh, a blue economy. Second is uh, uh, reevaluating uh, our uh, offshore fisheries. Right now, uh, there's only 20% of our domestic uh, uh, fishing zone, which is clearly not enough to sustain uh, a financially viable uh, fishing activity within uh, Palau's water. So we're going through a marine spatial planning uh, process to reevaluate uh, how much of our zone, of our EEZ, can actually be fished for domestic fisheries and how much can be protected and conserved to help enhance uh, 
biodiversity benefits to the fisheries and to the ocean. Uh, along with that, uh, we're uh, looking at how do we uh, revitalize our aquaculture. Uh, Pala has had an experience in developing aquaculture industry. Uh, we've had uh, success within uh, the Chan clam species. Now we're embarking on how do we uh, uh, look at uh, pinfish, particularly uh, milkfish, and the need to establish uh, uh, facilities to enhance uh, our ability to uh, uh, develop uh, milkfish uh, uh, industry. And milkfish has a very potential uh, product that contributes to food security and domestic fishing as well as potential for export. So one uh, growing uh, milkfish for bait within a long line fishing industry that we hope to uh, restart that is truly domestic, whereby uh, much of the benefit from long line fishing can be left in Palau through developing uh, onshore facilities where we process uh, the fish instead of just uh, exporting the fish uh, to the international market, how do we create value in Palau? So much of that benefit from the long line uh, fishing industry can be left in Palau uh, uh, that contribute to the economy as well as uh, contribute, contribute uh, to developing our human capacity. And second uh, product from the milk fish is potentially for exporting fish fries, milk fish fry to markets in Philippines and Taiwan. I understand that in the Philippines, they can only produce about 60% of the milkfish fry uh, to sustain uh, the milkfish industry in the Philippines. And our close proximity enable us for uh, getting into that specific niche market of uh, uh, exporting uh, uh, milkfish uh, to Philippines and Taiwan. And Taiwan during the winter season cannot produce uh, Milk fish fry, and so that's also an opportunity and a market uh, that we can uh, uh, participate. And the benefits from uh, growing uh, milk fish fry can then be used to help develop uh, a growing uh, milk fish uh, industry in Palau for food to support uh, food security. There's actually a demand for. Uh, milk fish within the local market and within the tourism market uh, for Palau. So as the tourism market uh, revived, uh, it's a potential product to introduce into the market. Sustainably produced uh, uh, fish, uh, far fish in Palau that retains value in Palau that is sustainably farmed that contribute to a healthy uh, marine ecosystem, but create that value in Palau whereby uh, we enhance uh, our blue economy through creating a new potential uh, a product uh, that can then open up uh, opportunities to continue to grow our aquaculture industry. And the needs for Palau's uh, aquaculture product is it's sustainably produced in a very clean environment as compared to uh, elsewhere in the world that we can have, potentially have a, a competitive advantage uh, within uh, uh, the global market, uh, uh, selling sustainably produced uh, and, and farmed uh, aquaculture product. So essentially that's how we're approaching uh, the blue economy uh, and, and developing it uh, uh, to be more resilient by focusing on how do we create a more resilient uh, tourism that is not uh, focused on mass tourism, but focused on high value tourism. And therefore we create more value in Palau. How do we uh, create a domestic uh, offshore fisheries that uh, uh, contribute to uh, a healthy and sustainable ocean and create value uh, within Palau where the benefit stays in Palau, and how do we grow our aquaculture sector that helps uh, to contribute to uh, food security. So in essence, those are the key, uh, uh, three key pillars for how we're uh, embarking on development of a resilient uh, uh, blue economy in Palau. And uh, of course, you've mentioned uh, 
a case study whereby we're working with uh, Japan through uh, China and of course through OPRI in exploring more uh, approaches in coastal fisheries as well as development of uh, uh, ecotourism that will then continue to enhance uh, our ability to create and develop uh, a resilient uh, blue economy in Palau. Yeah, so I'll stop you. there and think yeah. of more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Victor, for your real insight and then comprehensive introduction. And now we have a, a, a like allow me to invite another uh, panelist. For example, uh, uh, Dr. Siri from the Indonesia. As Indonesia became the presidency of G20 in 2022, uh, could you share with us the trend of the sustainable uh, fishery or Indonesia's global and regional agendas. Maybe we need to go quickly, so maybe briefly within uh, five minutes. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Michael. The thing is, um, yeah, I will be the presidency of the uh, G20. And uh, what uh, Blue Economy Strategy in Indonesia, we, we in interpreted into the five uh, key point areas. First is a marine conservation, how we enlarge the marine conservation, but not only the, the size, we want to uh, 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 increase the effectiveness of the management of marine uh, protected areas. Uh, we think this is because one of the key for uh, marine biology and uh, 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 nursery ground for the uh, ec most economic and value, high value economic of the fish, fish um, uh, in, in, in oceans. And then also uh, will be, uh, there are some the marine services such as like a tourism. And the second area, this is a quota based fisheries management. This is a new uh, uh, policy that we want to uh, uh, impose uh, because we we have we have uh, 11 uh, marine management areas. Uh, what we really want is uh, uh, each the uh, uh, fisheries management, the economic growth uh, center will be there. So uh, we uh, we try to uh, only active persons of the uh, uh, maximum what we call maximum sustainable yield, MSY, that can be allowed for the total allowable catch. So it's only active person of the fish uh, there. And the third uh, area is uh, sustainable aquacultures. You want to uh, make sure that uh, the aquaculture will be will be uh, generate will will be a generating income for um, for the community, not only in the uh, inland fisheries but also in coastal and also in the marine <laughs> areas. And then the third point is um, coastal and small island marine uh, uh, spatial management, which is, this is a really important because we, we talk about the spatial plan. And right now, Indonesia has already produced 160 uh, marine spatial plants. Uh, they will be uh, kind of like, uh, you know, uh, can be shared later on with the other uh, areas. And the last point uh, for the area is um, how we ensure that so we clean our uh, ocean and coastal from the, especially uh, garbage, especially the plastic waste which is, is already, you know, uh, can be uh, threatened to our uh, uh, marine biodiversity. So in as well, this is a five uh, uh, areas uh, we would like to, you know, to interpret, in, uh, interpret our blue economic strategy in Indonesia, which is already promoted by our minister, uh, Sakti Wahyu Trangono. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Yeah, we also have another uh, representative from Indonesia, is uh, Dr. Rima. Uh, well, following up uh, uh, Dr. Siri's introduction for the Indonesia strategy, would you provide your insights as a think tank for your experiences as a country economist or in the, your current research think tank for coordinating the establishment of blue economy and blue finance? Dr. Rima? Yes, thank you so much, Michael. So yeah, uh, before I, I go to the experience, uh, actually, if we see like uh, what happened uh, in Indonesia, like previously one of the, the think tank uh, reported that uh, the blue economy finance landscape in Indonesia is very uh, concentrated in uh, several uh, key players. Whereas as mentioned previously by many of the speaker that uh, the potential is very huge and the gap is also big. So uh, the work itself, it's uh, like we need to work uh, very hard and collaborative. And that's why I think that has a, a, a role in there. And even though like uh, 
uh, blue economy is still developing in Indonesia, like uh, previously Indonesia quite success in terms of uh, developing instrument for the green, like we have this green suku uh, that already several uh, times uh, being issued, but still like the composition uh, on the local investor, the domestic investor is quite low. It's only like 5%. So this is something that actually uh, think I need to work to raise the awareness, how the importance uh, to fill the gap uh, on the blue finance. And another thing, uh, based on my experience uh, working uh, with a different uh, stakeholder, stakeholder in, in this uh, area is uh, basically we need to connecting the dot. So basically mapping all the stakeholder, what is their role and make sure there's no overlapping and uh, work uh, to collaborate uh, to uh, as efficiency to uh, produce uh, like framework and then also to make sure also uh, all the knowledge like because all the research or all the this report that coming out uh, quite robust but it's not really a lot of them is not really practical when we talk with the uh, private sector, with the investor, they need something that is uh, quite practical. And currently in my uh, position uh, as uh, head of the research institute in uh, state-owned enterprise, so that what we do is translating some things that are already there uh, as the research product to be more, uh, uh, to be more practical. So it's easily to adapt. So, and also uh, based on like uh, previously explained how, for example, ADB work uh, in a uh, different area to tackling the issue on the blue finance, that still there's a, a room for think tank to connect them like between uh, uh, preparing, helping preparing the blue project, and then also to involve in like a blue accelerator, incubator, and also to create this investor forum, matchmaking, uh, to connect basically the, the blue project as well as uh, the investor. And another thing that quite uh, important also based on the experience is the data. We still have a lot of uh, data problem uh, to identify what actually uh, the blue sector are and how do we calculate. This is something important because we, we should know what is the potential, what is the gap without the uh, good data that's uh, uh, impossible to do. So think tank also can work on that, either helping collecting the data, create a protocol, how to collect data, and also working with the government to make sure they produce a, a, a really good data. Another, the last one, I think, is also to helping all these- uh, uh, Yeah, Rima, questions. yeah, we, we, we already collect a lot of questions, okay. so allow me to turn back to you later. Okay, so now- you. Thank you. We would like to turn to uh, another ASEAN country. I'd like to uh, ask Mr. Bolivian uh, Lao. Actually, Cambodia has shown a very vibrant role and ranked very high in the COVID-19 recovery index. So from the perspective of uh, SME's financing, could you share with us some case in Cambodia and how SME financing could effectively help blue economy related sectors? So in brief, about three minutes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you, uh, Michael. First of all, I would like to thank ADBI for inviting me to be panelist in this very important uh, conference. Uh, before I answer the question raised by Michael, I would like to, to share with all participants about the, uh, the snapshot of Cambodian economy. economy. In 2022, uh, uh, Cambodian expect to uh, to grow around uh, around five uh, five percent, and, and then in 2023, 20, uh, it will uh, continue to recover uh, with the average rate of uh, six percent. Uh, actually, uh, I, I just would like to share with the uh, the, the, the audience in this conference that uh, Cambodia right now does not have the specific. Uh, name of the blue economy uh, or, or open economy strategy or policy, uh, but the government uh, has put a lot of effort uh, uh, in many ways in order to uh, pro promote sustainable and green economic development. And I'm sure that uh, coastal uh, area development is uh, one of the key priority as well. 
regarding the the question about the SME financing, uh, I would say that uh, SME financing play very significant role to support SME in the blue economy sector. Uh, and before I answer to this question and uh, come into detail, I just would like to share briefly about the snapshot of uh, blue economic structure in Cambodia. Uh, in 2015, uh, actually this is a bit out of that uh, data, but uh, I think we, we don't have the, the latest one. Uh, it, is, it was estimated that the uh, Cambodian uh, blue economy created the value added around 2.4 billion US dollar, uh, which is uh, equivalent to 16% uh, of the GDP. And if we try to disaggregate by the sector, we can see that uh, fishery and marine aquaculture share around 46% of the GDP and port and shipping around 41% and while the coastal and marine tourism share only, only 3%. And uh, back to the COVID-19 uh, outbreak, uh, of course, uh, like other countries in the region, uh, a lot of SME uh, got affected by uh, COVID-19. And uh, during that time, uh, uh, hotel, restaurant, and even the marine aquaculture farmer also affected because of uh, drop of significant drop of, of demand. And in order to promote economic recovery, the, the rural government of Cambodia has launched a strategic framework and program to uh, for economic recovery in the context of uh, living with COVID-19 in a new normal 2021-2023. Under this recovery, I just would like to stress that supporting SME to recover and promoting green uh, recovery and grow and among the key priority. And for instance, the government tried to, uh, to launch the uh, 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 tourism uh, recovery co-financing uh, scheme in collaboration with the commercial bank, in order to provide the lending to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, SME in tourism sector, and uh, in addition, in order to support the SME uh, with no sufficient collateral uh, to access the financing, uh, the government also established the Credit Guarantee Corporation of Cambodia that we call uh, CGCC. And after, uh, right, what is the situation right now? Uh, right now, the SME in, uh, in the blue economy sector, especially for marine aquaculture and tourism, uh, start uh, quickly recover uh, because of the implementation uh, of the opening social economic activity in late 2021 by the government and also with uh, financial and non-financial support uh, by the government so that they can uh, quickly recover. And based on our uh, the survey with the, uh, with the marine aquaculture, they said that uh, right now, if compared to uh, uh, COVID-19 situation in 2020, uh, right now the farmer uh, not only uh, uh, survive in, in the sector, but also they can, they have ability to to, to scale up uh, the production uh, for uh, uh, supplying the, the domestic demand and also for export as well. And actually, uh, SME financing is just one small part, uh, but the public investment injected by the government is very important. I would just uh, raise some example, for instance, like 200 million US dollar of public investment in needed infrastructure in Cedar Wheel and to transform Cedar Wheel to become the multi-purpose special economic zone would be the very, uh, play very important role to promote the uh, blue economic development in, uh, in Cambodia. And not only uh, about the infrastructure, but also we, the government also try to uh, oh. to ensure that the development must be sustainable by investing in shoe weight system. Yeah, thank you. That's all from uh, from me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lau. Yeah. Uh, before we go to the our last uh, panelist, uh, Dr. Ho Soi, uh, we have already collect several questions. So maybe let me uh, uh, let me uh, ask the panelists to prepare, and then after the the discussion from the Dr. Ho Soi. So maybe we have questions that. Uh, uh, what is the role of women in the blue economy? How can blue finance be leveraged to promote gender equality? So maybe uh, Dr. Rima can answer this question uh, later or any uh, panelist. And 
others like uh, uh, what what is the, there's a question for Palau and Indonesia could you share some more about the role of uh, spatial plants so maybe we leave this question to Dr. Suri and maybe Minister Victor later so before we go down, well, allow me to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Ho Soing, uh, Research Director from Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ho Soing, would you briefly introduce the development of uh, Bangladesh progress for blue economy and what kind of incentive would you recommend policymakers and stakeholders to collaborate in this emerging and vital field? Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, important policy dialogue. Uh, before going into uh, uh, discuss with your uh, question, I think uh, I should give you uh, all uh, audience uh, about the background of the blue economy in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, uh, especially blue economy got prominence uh, since uh, 2015. And the reason is that Bangladesh uh, had been able to uh, re resolve or dissolve the disputes, uh, maritime disputes with uh, India in 2014 and Myanmar in 2000. Uh, 12. And with those uh, dispute uh, settlements with the International Tribunal, uh, now Bangladesh maritime sea area stands about almost the same as Bangladesh land boundary. So there is another Bangladesh in the Bay of Bengal. So from then, uh, the, merit, uh, the importance of blue economy has come into the fore and policymakers, experts and researchers are uh, now thinking about how to unlock the potential of the maritime uh, blue economy, particularly in the maritime sea of Bangladesh. Uh, the issue, as already other uh, panelists discussed, the issue is uh, quite new and evolving, even for Bangladeshi policymakers and experts and others. Uh, so that's why it is important to conceptualize the issues and potentials and other resource mobilizations. And these, these are the important things to explore the benefits of blue economy for Bangladesh. Uh, as you understand, it is almost the similar another Bangladesh uh, area in the sea. So it, it could be huge potential to help the, uh, help improve the sustainable development goals of Bangladesh, including the poverty eradication. Uh, I will just highlight a few issues that are important for, uh, uh, for Bangladesh to uh, promote blue economy. First of all, it is important to identify the scope and the potential of the blue economy for this research and development and other studies are needed. Then it is important to determine the institutional framework, not only for uh, maritime tourism that was in fact highlighted in the book, also for uh, identifying the resources and uses, uh, use of the resources very in a sustainable manner. Third issue is important to identify the bankable projects for climate uh, risk uh, mitigation and uh, adaptation. The reason is that Bangladesh is one of the uh, climate vulnerable countries. So ocean is uh, is also a source of very important climate uh, risk. So uh, the bankable projects is very important to identify first of all. Then the issue come up with the mo uh, resource mobilization. Bangladesh has a public-private partnership, but the issue is that, first of all, it is important to identify the right projects, graded projects for the blue economy. Then the issue come up with the uh, domestic resource mobilization or international resource mobilization. Uh, one study shows that by 2030, Bangladesh will need around 10 to $20 billion uh, for the investment in the blue economy. So huge amount of uh, uh, investment would be required for this. I think some incentives like you can, uh, as you mentioned, I think could come in the form of fiscal incentives, uh, tax incentives or other things from the part of the government. It is also important to streamline uh, blue economy financing for the bankers because bankers need to understand and they need to be trained about the technicalities of the blue economy and aspects of the uh, blue economy aspects. And also it is important to capacity building of the stakeholders. And that's why bank, uh, government can invest in the capacity building, research and development and others. And multilateral donors, uh, development partners like ADB can come up as uh, Robert has said, that come up with some uh, investable projects and capacity building aspects of the uh, blue economy in Bangladesh. Finally, I would, uh, as time constraint is here, so I would say that there are at least four areas that can be identified for the uh, for improving the blue economy. One is climate resilience and adaptation. Another is marine renewable energy. 
Third is plastic pollution prevent, prevention, as uh, some of us mentioned, sustainable fisheries. I think these are one study shows that these are the key areas for Bangladesh uh, blue economy development, and about 70 80 percent respondents thought that these are the issues that uh, should get more investment. Uh, with this, and there are, of course, there are many challenges. I don't want to elaborate at this moment. With this uh, few words, I want to stop here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Also, I congratulate you and coordinators, co-editors and uh, contributors for this excellent book. Thank you so much, Dr. Hosoe. Uh, now, we in the remaining five minutes, would like to answer the question from the floor as much as possible. So first, allow me to go to uh, the question two. What is the role of women in blue economy and how can blue finance could leverage to promote gender equality? Uh, Dr. Okay. Rima. Mm. Okay, thank you, Michael. Yeah, I think uh, one of the key player is the SME, like uh, the small medium enterprise, and many women work in there. So they are the first front of the economy. For example, in Indonesia, nine, over ninety percent of economy is consists of MA, uh, the SME. So through the blue economy, we can leverage that, and of of course, women as the front front of the uh, SME is uh, get the benefit of that. Uh, as the result of the development of the blue economy. That's yeah, the thank you. Mm, thank you so much. I think, yeah, this is the, the woman in ocean is a very huge problem. And then actually we are planning another well book publication for to discussing that that issue. Well it's a this COVID paper will be coming soon. Thank you. So allow me to uh, maybe turn to uh, Dr. S uh, Siri to answer the zoning problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe the the presentation might not be available, but could you kindly elaborate uh, that kind of zoning uh, strategy? Right. Uh, yes. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Michael. Thank you for the question. I think um, uh, what we have in Indonesia, we have a marine at one. This is from the regional one. So uh, we areas or can you hear me yeah dr siri we couldn't hear you clearly maybe uh would you maybe um, in some key points right yes uh this is on coastal and marine Hope you okay. Right. It's, mm. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. I think... Allow me to intervene. If uh, yes. so sorry, if you can just turn off your camera, maybe the signal, uh, the the reception would be better. Right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So yeah. So in Indonesia, we have a mandate from by the law that uh, we have a. Uh, very special plans. Uh, by hierarchy, we have a national, provincial, interregional, and local uh, marine special plan. And uh, for why we need this is a marine special plan because there are several uh, reasons, uh, especially for uh, we have um, what we call this uh, urgent pleasure uh, overfishing and climate change, unsustainable fishing practice, coastal and marine degradation, uh, coastal deployment and marine pollution conflict interest among the sectors on marine space utilization and also poor uh, coastal and marine management. So by having like that, so we want to get the harmonize of the, all the sectors uh, from uh, in the coastal and also the marine areas. And uh, also in Indonesia, we have the three objectives for marine spatial planning. The first uh, objective, of course, for the ecology. The ecology is to ensure the protection of coastal and marine ecosystem, as well as important of marine habitats. Economy, of course, for how to ensure that uh, special and legal certainty in the marine and fisheries investment, minimize the marine special conflicts, and to improve the efficiency of marine resources and space utilization. The last but not least is so social. Social is to ensure the certain of space for coastal and communities livelihood. Uh, so uh, uh, Michael, we have also specific in our uh, marine special planning, we have to acknowledge what we call this uh, low, uh, customary law society. So this is one, uh, you know, the, the uh, example that I want to share with 
with the audience. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, now, also for our other questions uh, from our audience, I would like to invite uh, Minister Victor again. Uh, what are your re uh, recommendation on innovative strategy for boosting sustainable ocean and coastal development? Hope you can give us some brief in about two minutes. Uh, thank you, Michael. I'll be very brief. And I, I think there's really two criteria that I would uh, recommend. And I think much of the strategies has been uh, discussed, but uh, I would really focus on evidence-based uh, uh, blue financing and also evidence-based uh, marine spatial planning. Uh, if we use evidence, uh, particularly robust science and economics to help guide the how we're making decisions on the ocean. Uh, to me, that helps us move toward a more sustainable ocean. In addition, being inclusive uh, of all the uh, stakeholders, particularly women and the most uh, vulnerable who are often uh, are uh, not engaged at the very beginning of uh, strategy development. I think uh, if we engage uh, women and vulnerable uh, people in this process, we, we come up with uh, strategies that addresses the very core socioeconomic needs of any communities. And therefore we are moving toward a more sustainable uh, ocean as well as uh, development that really meets uh, the needs uh, of uh, the communities by which uh, uh, development is being uh, advocated. Uh, so I think those are two kind of uh, key criteria that I would uh, uh, continue to advocate as key uh, in, in any strategy development. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Victor. Uh, I would like to also raise a question that uh, in front of floor, that given the multi-sectoral nature of blue economy, what kind of a mechanism need to be in place to ensure that investments in the blue sector will result a positive impact or negative impact? There might be a huge uh, question. So I would like to allow to any uh, panelists who would like to, like to answer this question. So how can we uh, accelerate the blue uh, blue economy and what kind of mechanism is needed. So maybe we'd like to invite Dr. Hosun to give a quick uh, response. Uh, thank you, Michael. I think uh, uh, blue bond is an uh, option. I think very uh, possible option for investing in the blue economy. But problem is that in many countries like Bangladesh, developing countries, bond market is not yet matured. And uh, also this is very new concept. So. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, the first, I think, green bond was introduced, but now the issue is uh, that if we need to invest uh, uh, in uh, in a blue economy, so it is important to introduce the blue bond, and definitely it will have some positive uh, benefit in the sense that it will uh, reduce the risk of, uh, uh, risk of, uh, I think, uh, uh, what I can say, the uh, um, mobilizing resources from different sources that are not sustainable. So that's why it is important, but for the countries, it is important to identify the bankable projects, important projects, and then to go for some blue bond issues. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hosein, for your, your insight and also kind of reminding of all the participants and then stakeholders that the ocean uh, research and ocean economy, blue economy is very interdisciplinary and only through the joint hands from uh, different ministry and stakeholders and as well as the think tanks to work on this issue all together. I believe that this book and then we, we this is just the beginning and with uh, our panelists uh, today also give the robustness of this book and contents and we will continue to strengthen the contents and then for the well, holistic approach for that. So please join me to uh, thank all the participants and then all the uh, panelists that join at this panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you. So thank now, you. thank you so much. Now I over thank the floor so to Pichaya.
Thank, thank you very much, Mike, Michael, for your excellent moderating skill. And also, uh, thank you all the panelists uh, for the pol on the, in the policy dialogue today. So we have learned a lot about this uh, country strategy from our distinguished panelists, uh, how to protect the marine ecosystem, how to improve infrastructure uh, for the development of the blue economy and blue finance, uh, the trend and also the development in each economy of each country. So we thank all of them for these uh, very knowledgeable and also informative information. Um, so now we have come to the end of this uh, book launch and also policy dialogue. Um, as I mentioned, we have listened a lot about the country strategy along with many international agreements and also the report that have been launched and implemented to support the development and the contribution of the ocean and the blue economies. We have heard about, uh, of course, everybody knows about the United Nations SDG of 14, as well as uh, we have repeatedly uh, mentioned and also emphasized the ADB Healthy Origin Initiative that ADB has launched uh, in the last three years to support uh, the developing country in Asia in this particular area. Uh, so with all of these de de development and progress is highlighted important, as well as the agency to expedite the progress toward the sustainability and resilience in the ocean latest context. And we can, we can see it through national action plans, as well as the national cooperation, as highlighted by the VP Kassali, that uh, it's very important for us just to be hand in hand, strengthen this international National organization to support this development. Um, so, with all that note, we hope that uh, our publication on the blue finance, uh, blue economy, and blue finance will be an uh, important uh, part and complementary part to support in terms of the knowledge product that ADB, uh, in collaboration with OPRI and Ancoi uh, University of Wollongong. Uh, to, uh, to develop this publication to be a useful sources of information and knowledge that the government official, particularly from the developing country in the region, can utilize this knowledge for their policy design or action plan for the ocean development. As my, uh, Michael mentioned, we will continue our collaboration to further uh, and to support the developing country in the region. And uh, we look forward to our next collaboration, uh, particular uh, when it's come to uh, spread 10 uh, ocean equity uh, in the next year. Uh, with all that note, um, I would like just to thank all the speaker, all the panelists, all the moderators uh, for this event. And I also like to uh, invite all the audience to uh, respond to the satisfactory survey that ADBI would just send out to you. And you can also uh, do by uh, this link and also the QR code so that uh, we will know how much you like this kind of event. And also your input will help us to develop a better uh, capacity building program and also conference that would be of your interest. So thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in our ADBI next event. Thank you. And bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.